Krishna, everyone. Welcome back to the daily readings of Srila Prabhupada's books right here in the live studio at Hive, Anglo-Saxon Haven in Southeast England. Southeast England. Uh, second day of Kartik. Anybody take their vows? Please keep your vows going. Uh, um, Srimad Bhagavatam Mahima Stotram from Sri Krishna Lila Stava, verses 412 through 416 by Srila Sanatana Goswami. Glorifying the Srimad Bhagavatam and in context the Bhagavad Gita as well, because the Bhagavad Gita is in the same category as the Srimad Bhagavatam, literary incarnation of God, spoken directly by Krishna, God Himself, Supreme Personality of Godhead. Goes like this Sarva Shastra Dipi Yusha, Sarva Vedaika Satpala, Sarva Siddhanta Ratnaja, Sarva Lokaika Drik Prada. O nectar from the ocean of all scriptures, singular fruit of all the Vedas, rich mine of the precious gems of all conclusive truths, you are the only giver of sight to all the worlds. Sarva Bhagavata Prana. Srimad Bhagavata Prabho Kali Dwandurita Aditya Sri Krishna Parivartita O life heir of all the Supreme Lord's devotees O Master Srimad Bhagavatam You are the sun risen in the darkness of Kali You are the exact image of Sri Krishna Paramananda Pataya Prema Varshak Shadayate Sarvadasava Sevyaya Sri Krishnaya Namostume. I bow down to you, who are supremely blissful to read. Your every syllable pours down a flood of prema. You can always be served by everyone. You are Sri Krishna Himself. Madeka Bando Matsangin Madguro Mad Mahadana Manistadakamad Bhagya Mad Ananda Namostute. My only friend, my constant companion, my spiritual master, my great wealth, my savior, my good fortune, my source of ecstasy, I bow down to you. Asadu sadhuta dayin atini chochata kada anamunchagadachin mam premna rit kanta O bestower of saintliness to the unsaintly, O exalter of the most fallen, please never leave me. Always appear in my heart and my voice with pure love. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Okay, here we are. Uh, Bhagavad Gita as it is. You look it up. Srila Prabhupada spoke many times this statement. To become guru is easy. It's not difficult. You simply have to learn the Bhagavad Gita and repeat it without changing it to everyone. Bhagavad Gita as it is. Chapter 3. Karma Yoga. Everyone must engage in some sort of activity in this material world. But actions can either bind one to this world or liberate one from it. By acting for the pleasure of the Supreme, without selfish motives, one can be liberated from the law of karma, action and reaction, and attain transcendental knowledge of the Self and the Supreme. Text 1 Arjuna Uvacha Jayasi Chet Karmanaste Matabhudir Janardana Tat Kim Karmani Gore Mang Niyu Jayasi Keshava Arjuna said O Janardana O Keshava why do you want to engage me in this ghastly warfare if you think that intelligence 
is better than fruitive work. Purport The Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna, has very elaborately described the constitution of the soul in the previous chapter with a view to delivering his intimate friend, Arjuna, from the ocean of material grief. And the path of realization has been recommended, Buddha Yoga, or Krishna Consciousness. Sometimes Krishna Consciousness is misunderstood to be inertia, and one with such a misunderstanding often withdraws to a secluded place to become fully Krishna conscious by chanting the holy name of the Lord. But without being trained in the philosophy of Krishna consciousness, it is not advisable to chant the holy name of Krishna in a secluded place where one might, may acquire only sh cheap adoration from the innocent public. Arjuna also thought of Krishna consciousness or Buddha Yoga or intelligence in spiritual advancement of knowledge as something like retirement from active life and the practice of penance and austerity in a secluded place. <clears throat> in other words, he wanted to skillfully avoid the fighting by using Krishna consciousness as an excuse. But as, but as a sincere student, he placed the matter before his master and questioned Krishna to the best course of action. In answer, Lord Krishna elaborately explained karma yoga or work in Krishna consciousness in this third chapter. Text 2 Bhya mishe neva vakyena budhim mohaya siva me tadekam vadanis chitya yena sheho hamapyunam Translation My intelligence is bewildered by your equivocal instructions. Therefore, tell me decisively which will be more most beneficial for me. Purport <clears throat> In the previous chapter, as a prelude to the Bhagavad Gita, many different paths were explained, such as Sankhya Yoga, Buddha Yoga, control of the senses by intelligence, work without fruitive desire, and the position of the neophyte. This was all presented unsystematically. A more organized outline of the path would be necessary for action and understanding. Arjuna therefore wanted to clear up these apparently confusing matters so that any common man could accept them without misinterpretation. Although Krishna had no intention of confusing Arjuna by any jugglery of words, Arjuna could not follow the process of Krishna consciousness, either by inertia or by active service. In other words, by his questions, he is clearing the path of Krishna consciousness for all students who seriously want to understand the mystery of the Bhagavad Gita. Text 3 Shri Bhagavan Ubhacha Lokesmen Dvi Vidanishta Pura Bhokta Mayanaga Jnana Yogena Sankhyanam Karma Yogena Yoginam The Supreme Personality of Godhead said, O sinless Arjuna, I have already explained that there are two classes of men who try to realize the Self. Some are inclined to understand it by empirical philosophical speculation and others by devotional service. Purport. <clears throat> Purport. 
<clears throat> in the second chapter, verse 39, the Lord explained two kinds of procedures, namely Sankhya Yoga and Karma Yoga or Buddhi Yoga. In this verse, the Lord explains the same more clearly. Sankhya Yoga or the analytical study of the nature of spirit and matter is the subject matter for persons who are inclined to speculate and understand things by experimental knowledge and philosophy. <clears throat> the other class of men work in Krishna consciousness, as it is explained in the 61st chapter, a verse of the second chapter. The Lord has explained also in the 39th verse that by working that by working by the principles of bhakti yoga or Krishna consciousness, one can be relieved from the bonds of action. And furthermore, there is no flaw in the process. The same principle is more clearly explained in the 61st verse. That is, buddhi yoga is to depend entirely on the Supreme, or more specifically, on Krishna, and in this way, all these senses can be brought under control very easily. Therefore, both the yogas are inter interdependent as religion and philosophy. Religion without philosophy is sentiment or sometimes fanaticism, while philosophy without religion is mental speculation. The ultimate goal is Krishna, because the philosophers who are also sincerely searching after the Absolute Truth come in the end to Krishna Consciousness. This is also stated in the Bhagavad Gita. The whole process is to understand the real position of the Self in relation to the Super-Self. The indirect process is philosophical speculation by which gradually one may come to the point of Krishna Consciousness. And the other process is directly connecting everything with Krishna in Krishna Consciousness. Of these two, the path of Krishna Consciousness is better because it does not depend on purifying the senses by a philosophical process. Krishna Consciousness is itself the purifying process and by the direct method of devotional service it is simultaneously easy and sublime. Text 4 Nakarmanam manadamban naishkarmyam purushoshnute nachasanya sanadeva sidim samadigachtiti not by merely abstaining from work can one achieve freedom from reaction, nor by renunciation alone can one attain perfection. You can close the windows, please. Purport. The renounced order of life can be accepted when one has been purified by the discharge of the prescribed form of duties, which are laid down just to purify the hearts of materialistic men. Without purification, one cannot attain success by abruptly adopting the fourth order of life, sannyas. According to the empirical philosophers, simply by adopting sannyas or retiring from fruitive activities, one at once becomes as good as Narayana. But Lord Krishna does not approve this principle. Without purification of heart, sannyas is simply a disturbance to the social order. On the other hand, if someone takes to the transcendental service of the Lord, even without discharging his prescribed duties, whatever he may, may be able to advance in the cause is accepted by the Lord. Buddhi Yoga Svalpamapya Siddharmasya Trayate Mahato Bhayat even a slight performance of such a principle enables one to overcome great difficulties. 
text 5. Nahi kach chit chanamapi jatu tishchat chakarma krit karyate yabashak karma sarvak prakriti jayar gunahi. Everyone is forced to act helplessly according to the qualities he has acquired from the modes of material nature. Therefore, no one can refrain from doing something, not even for a moment. Purport It is not a question of embodied life, but it is the nature of the soul to be always active. Without the presence of the spirit soul, the material body cannot move. The body is only a dead vehicle to be worked by the, super, by the spirit soul, which is always active and cannot stop, even for a moment. As such, the spirit soul has to be engaged in the good work of Christian consciousness. Otherwise, it will be engaged in occupations dictated by illusory energy. In contact with material energy, the spirit soul acquires material modes, and to purify the soul from such affinities, it is necessary to engage in the prescribed duties enjoined in the Shastras. But if the soul is engaged in his natural function of Krishna consciousness, whatever he is able to do is good for him. The Srimad Bhagavatam 1517 affirms this. Chaktva Swidharmam Charanam Bhajam Harer Bhajan Apakvo Tapatet Tato Yadi Yatra Kova Bhadrama Bud Amushyakim Kovarta Apto Bhajatam Swidharmataha. If someone takes to Krishna consciousness, even though he may not follow the prescribed duties in the Shastras or execute the devotional service properly, and even though he may fall down from the standard, there is no loss or evil for him. But if he carries out all the injunctions for purification in the Shastras, what does, what does it avail him if he is not Krishna conscious? So the purificatory process is necessary for reaching this point of Krishna consciousness. Therefore, sannyas or any purificatory process is to help reach the ultimate goal of becoming Krishna conscious, without which everything is considered a failure. Text 6 Karmendriyani samyamya ya aste manasasmaran indriyartan vimudatma mityachara sa uchate. One who restrains the senses of action, but whose mind dwells on sense objects, certainly deludes himself and is called a pretender. Purport There are many pretenders who refuse to work in Krishna consciousness but make a show of meditation while actually dwelling within the mind upon sense enjoyment. Such pretenders may also speak on dry philosophy in order to bluff sophisticated followers. But according to this verse, these are the greatest cheaters. For sense enjoyment, one can act in any capacity of the social order. But if one follows the rules and regulations of his particular status, he can make gradually progress. He can make gradual progress in purifying his existence. But he who makes a show of being a yogi while actually searching for the objects of sense gratification must be called the greatest cheater, even though he sometimes speaks of philosophy. His knowledge has no value because the effects of a, such a sinful man's knowledge has been taken away by the illusory energy of the Lord. Such a pretender's mind is always impure and therefore his show of yogic meditation has no value whatsoever. 
Text 7, Srila Prabhupada, the straight shooter, the straightforward speaker. 7, Text 7. Hmm. Yastvindriyani manasa niyam yarapa terjuna niyam niyam yarapa niyam yarapa tetes terjuna karmindriyai karma yogam asakta sufficiente on the other hand if a sincere person tries to control the active senses by the mind and begins karma yoga in krishna consciousness without attachment he is by far superior purport <clears throat> instead of becoming a pseudo transcendentalist for the sake of wanton living and sense enjoyment it is far better <clears throat> to remain in one's own business and execute the purpose of life, which is to get free from material bondage and enter into the kingdom of God. The prime swarka, the prime swartakati, or goal of self-interest, is to reach Vishnu. The whole institution of varna and ashram is designed to help us reach this goal of life. A householder can also reach this destination by regulated service in Krishna consciousness. For self-realization, one can live a controlled life as prescribed in the Shastras and continue carrying out his business without attachment and, and in that way make progress. A sincere person who follows this method is far better situated than the false pretender who adopts show bottle spiritualism to cheat the innocent public. A sincere sweeper in the street is far better situated than the charlatan meditator who meditates only for the sake of making a living. Prabhupada Kijai Text 8 <clears throat> Niyatam kuru karma tvang karma jayo yakarmanaha Sharira yatra pichate na prasid yet a karmanaha. Perform your prescribed duty, for doing so is better than not working. One cannot even maintain one's physical body without work. Purport There are many pseudo meditators who misrepresent themselves as being great professional men of high parentage and who falsely pose that they have sacrificed everything for the sake of advancement in spiritual life. Lord Krishna did not want Arjuna to become a pretender. Rather, the Lord desired that Arjuna perform his prescribed duties as set forth for Kshatriyas. Arjuna was a householder and a military general and therefore it was better for him to remain as such and perform his religious duties as prescribed for the householder Kshatriyas. Such activities gradually cleanse the heart of a mundane man and free him from material contamination. So-called renunciation for the purpose of maintenance is never approved by the Lord nor by any religious scripture. After all, one has to maintain one's body and soul together by some work. Work should not be given up capriciously without purification of materialistic propensities. Anyone who is in the material world is certainly possessed of the impure propensity for lording over material nature. Shall we repeat that again? Thank you. Anyone who is in the material world is certainly possessed of the impure propensity for lording over material nature, or in other words, for sense gratification. Such polluted propensities have to be cleared. Without doing so, through prescribed duties, one should never attempt to become a so-called transcendentalist, renouncing work 
and living at the cost of others. Text 9. Jagyar tat karmanon yatra loko yam karmabandanaha tadartam karmakonteya mukta sangha samachara Work done as a sacrifice for Vishnu has to be performed. Otherwise, work causes bondage in this material world. Therefore, O son of Kunti, perform your prescribed duties for his satisfaction. And in this way, you will always remain free from bondage. Purport Since one has to work even for the simple maintenance of the body, the prescribed duties for a particular social position and quality are so made that per that, that purpose can be fulfilled. Yajna means Lord Vishnu or sacrificial performances. All sacrificial performances also are meant for the satisfaction of Lord Vishnu. The Vedas enjoin Yajyo Vai Vishnu. In other words, the same purpose is served whether one performs prescribed yajyas or directly serves Lord Vishnu. Krishna consciousness is therefore performance of yajna as it is prescribed in this verse. The Varnashrama institution also aims at satisfying Lord Vishnu. Varnashrama charnavata Purushena Padak Puman Vishnur Aradyate Vishnu Purana 3.8.9 Therefore, one has to work for the satisfaction of Vishnu. Any other work done in this material world will be the cause of bondage, for both good and evil work have their reactions, and any reaction binds the performer. Therefore, one has to work in Krishna consciousness to satisfy Krishna or Vishnu. And while performing such activities, one is in a liberated stage. This is the great art of doing work. And in the beginning, this process requires very expert guidance. One should therefore act very diligently under the expert guidance of a devotee of Lord Krishna or under the direct instruction of Krishna himself under whom Arjuna had the opportunity to work. Nothing should be performed for sense gratification but everything should be done for the satisfaction of Krishna. This practice will not only save one from the reaction of work but also gradually elevate one to transcendental loving service of the Lord, which alone can raise one to the kingdom of God. Text 10 Sahad Jagya Prajashrishtva Purubacha Prajapatihi Anena Pashavishadvam Eshavo Strishtakamaduk In the beginning of creation, the Lord of all creatures sent forth generations of men and demigods along with sacrifices for Vishnu and blessed them by saying, Be thou happy by this yajna sacrifice because its performance will bestow upon you everything desirable for living happily and achieving liberation. Purport The material creation by the Lord of creatures, Vishnu, is a chance offered to the conditioned souls to come back home, back to Godhead. All living entities within the material creation are conditioned by material nature because of their forgetfulness of their relationship to Vishnu or Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The Vedic principles are to help us understand this eternal relation. As it is stated in the Bhagavad Gita, Vedaish Chasarvar Aham Eva Vedyaha. The Lord says that the purpose of the Vedas 
is to understand Him. In the Vedic hymns, it is said, Patim Vishwasyat Mameshwaram, Patim Vishwasyat Meshwaram. Therefore, Vishnu, therefore the Lord of the living entities is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Vishnu. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, also 2 4 20, Srila Shukadeva Goswami des describes the Lord as Pati in so many ways. Sri Yakpatir, Yagyapati, Prajapatir, Diyang Patir, Lokapatir, Dara Patihi, Patir Kitish Chanda Gavishni, Satpakam, Vishni Satpatam, Prasidatam Me Bhagavan, Satam Prati. The Prajapati is Lord, Lord Vishnu, and he is the Lord of all living creatures, all worlds and all beauties, and the protector of everyone. The Lord created this material world to enable the conditioned souls to learn how to perform yagyas, sacrifices, for the satisfaction of Vishnu, so that while in the material world they can live very comfortably, without anxiety, and after finishing the present material body, they can enter into the kingdom of God. That is the whole program for the conditioned soul. By performance of yajna, the conditioned souls gradually become Krishna conscious and become godly in all respects. In the age of Kali, the Sankirtan yajna, the chanting of the, of the names of God, is recommended by the Vedic scriptures. And this transcendental system was introduced by Lord Chaitanya for the deliverance of all men in this age. Sankirtan Yajna and Krishna Consciousness go well together. Lord Krishna, in his devotional form as Lord Chaitanya, is mentioned in the Srimad Bhagavatam 11.5.32 as follows, with special reference to the Sankirtan Yajna. Krishna Varnam Twisha Krishnam Sangopangastra Parshadam Yajnai Sankirtana Prayar Yajantihi Sumedasaha In this age of Kali, people who are endowed with sufficient intelligence will worship the Lord, who is accompanied by his associates by performance of Sankirtan Yajna. Other Yajnas prescribed in the Vedic literatures are not easy to perform in this age of Kali. But the Sankirtan Yajna is easy and sublime for all purposes as recommended in Bhagavad Gita. Also, 9.14 Text 11 Devan Bhavyata Neda Te Deva Bhavyantu Baha Parasparam Bhavyantak Shreyak Paramavapshita. The demigods, being pleased by sacrifices, will also please you. And thus, by cooperation between men and demigods, prosperity will reign for all. Purport The demigods are empowered administrators of material affairs. The supply of air, light, water, and all other benedictions for maintaining the body and soul of every living entity is entrusted to the demigods who are innumerable assistants in different parts of the body of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Their pleasures and displeasures are dependent on the performance of yajnas by the human being. Some of the yajnas are meant to satisfy particular demigods. But even in do so doing, Lord Vishnu is worshipped in all yajnas as the chief beneficiary. It is stated also in the Bhagavad Gita that Krishna himself <coughs> is the beneficiary of all kinds of yajnas. Bhoktaram yajna tapasam Therefore, ultimate satisfaction of the yajnapati 
is, is the chief purpose of all yagyas. When these yagyas are perfectly performed, naturally, the demigods in charge of the different departments of supply are pleased, and there is no scarcity in the supply of natural products. Performance of yagyas has many side effects, ultimately leading to liberation from material bondage. By performance of yagyas, all, act, all activities become purified, and as stated in the Vedas, Chandogya, Upanishad, 7.26.2, Ahada Shudao Sattva Shudhi, Sattva Shudao, Dhruva Smriti, Smriti Lamve, Sarva Grantinam, Vipramokshaha, By performance of yajna, one's eatables become satisfied, sanctified, sorry. Let's say that again. By performance of yajna, one's eatables become sanctified. And by eating sanctified foodstuffs, one's very existence becomes purified. By the purification of existence, finer tissues in the memory become sanctified. And when memory is sanctified, one can think of the path of liberation. And all these combined together lead to Krishna consciousness, the great necessity of present-day society. Present-day society. Not just society 5,000 years ago. Present-day society. Text 12. <clears throat> Ishtan bhogan ifo deva dasyante jagyabha vitaha tayar dathan apadayay bhyo yo bhukte stena eva saha In charge of the various necessities of life, <clears throat> the demigods, being satisfied by the performance of yagya, sacrifice, will supply all necessities to you. But he who enjoys such gifts without offering them to the demigods in return, is certainly a thief. PURPORT The demigods are authorized supplying agents on behalf of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Vishnu. Therefore, they must be, they must be satisfied by the performance of prescribed yagyas. In the Vedas, there are different kinds of yagyas, prescribed for different kinds of demigods, but all are ultimately offered to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. For one who cannot understand what the Personality of Godhead is, sacrifice to the demigods is recommended. According to the different material qualities of the persons concerned, different types of yagyas are recommended in the Vedas. Worship of different demigods is also on the same basis, namely, according to different qualities. For example, the meat-eaters are recommended to worship their goddess, Kali, the ghastly form of material nature. And before the goddess, the sacrifice of, sacrifice of animals is recommended. But for those who are in the mode of goodness, the transcendental worship of Vishnu is recommended. But ultimately, all yagyas are meant for gradual promotion to the transcendental position. For ordinary men, at least five yagyas, known as pancha maha yagya, are necessary. One should know, however, that all the necessities of life that the human society requires are supplied by the demigod agents of the Lord. No one can manufacture anything Take, for example, all the eatables of human society. These eatables include grains, fruits, vegetables, milk, sugar, etc. For the persons in the mode of goodness and also eatables for the non-vegetarians, like meats, none of which can be manufactured by men. Then again, take, for example, heat, light, water, air, etc., which are also 
necessities of life. None of them can be manufactured by the human society. Without the Supreme Lord, there can be no profuse sunlight, moonlight, rainfall, breeze, etc., without which no one can live. Obviously, our life is dependent on supplies from the Lord. Even for our manufacturing enterprises, we require so many raw materials like metal, sulfur, mercury, manganese, and so many essentials, all of which are supplied by the agents of the Lord, silica. And the purpose that we should, with the purpose that we should make, I'll read that again. Sorry, I injected a word there. Hare Krishna. <clears throat> Even for our manufacturing enterprises, we require so many raw materials like metal, sulfur, mercury, manganese, and so many essentials, all of which are supplied by the agents of the Lord with the purpose that we should make proper use of them to keep ourselves fit and healthy for the purpose of self-realization, leading to the ultimate goal of life, namely, liberation from the material struggle for existence. This aim of life is attained by the performance of yagyas. If we forget the purpose of human life and simply take supplies from the agents of the Lord for sense gratification and become more and more entangled in material existence, which is not the purpose of creation, certainly we become thieves and therefore we are punished by the laws of material nature. A society of thieves can never be happy because they have no aim in life. The gross materialist, the gross materialist thieves have no ultimate goal of life. They are simply directed to sense gratification, nor do they have knowledge of how to perform Yagyas. Lord Chaitanya, however, inaugurated the easiest performance of yagya, namely the Sankirtan yagya, which can be performed by anyone in the world who accepts the principles of Krishna consciousness. Hare Krishna. So that's what we're doing right now, boys and girls. We're performing the yagya, speaking the sound, clear sound, without adding or subtracting anything, how to live in this world in a way that will liberate us and allow us to enter into the transcendental loving service of the Lord, who is supplying everything to us, everything. Hare Krishna. So, Welcome to Kartik version of our daily readings of Srila Prabhupada's books. We're going to read from now on from 7 o'clock until 7.45 and then we're going to have 15 minutes of reflections and discussions, questions, and then we will stop at 8 o'clock. Hare Krishna. All glories to Srila Prabhupada for his undying untiring work, practical devotional service to translate and commentate and train his devotees uh, during the time he was with us. Superhuman. We owe it to him. We owe it to him to follow these instructions and we owe it to ourselves. Hare Krishna. I'll stop here. Thank you. First is from Santa Rupa Devidas. Santa Rupa Hare Krishna. She says Hare Krishna. Well, Hare Krishna to you too. <coughs> Thank you for being there. From Gopakanya Devidasi. Gopakanya Devidasi Hari Bo. Hare Krishna, dear Maharaj, and all friends, 
All glories to Sri the Prabhupada. All glories to His divine grace. Thank you. Sri Devi Dasi says Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna Sri Devi Dasi. Here's something from Bhakta Rupa. Bhakta Rupa Hari Bo. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Sri the Prabhupada. Jai Hare Krishna. We are a little way through the second chapter of reading the Bhagavad Gita straight during our weekly morning programs. Mm. And it's amazing the power of reading this book aloud. Absolutely. It's my main aim in life to aspire, inspire devotees and aspire myself to read out loud Prabhupada's books out to others in the company of others, in the assembly of the Vaishnavas who, who have a taste. This is the what the world needs. All the solutions are here, as we've heard in this wonderful reading tonight. Hare Krishna. While reading this morning, it was palpable how Prabhupada really is present in these purports. It's amazing that we can just sit back and allow Prabhupada himself to preach clearly to new people about the science of the soul. Absolutely. Book distribution, ki jai. We have a small but steady group of students that come each week, chant Drapa with us, read the Bhagavad Gita, some Kirtan, then Prasadam. Wonderful, that's the program. My favorite time of the week. Jai Sri the Prabhupada, thanks for your constant inspiration. Hare Krishna, thank you. Wonderful. From Rati Manjari. Hare Krishna Rati, Hare Bo. Jai Guru Maharaj, my soul is happy to hear you once again. Hare Krishna. I was afraid my voice wasn't going to make it, but by the inspiration of Abhai Das Brahmachari, I got, got it together. <laughs> Hare Krishna. From Krishnangi, Mulder. Hare Krishna, Mulder. Hare Bo. Hare Krishna, <coughs> Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Respects to all the assembled devotees. Reflecting on how we can cheat ourselves in so many ways. And on the other side, Krishna gives so many opportunities to come towards him, even when we have just a little desire to know him. I pray I can hear him, hold his guidance as precious gems within my heart, and act upon them more and more, and not cheat myself out of the good fortune Sri the Prabhupada is gifting to me in this life. Hare Krishna, very wonderful. Thank you for that reflection and that realization. Spoken like a true devotee. Something here from Braj Palaba. Hey Braj, Haribo. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare please Krishna. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Sri the Prabhupada. All glories to Sri the Prabhupada. Is it correct to understand the demigods are functioning in their role as a service and a means of serving Krishna just in a different way than, say, myself? Yes. They're, they're empowered by Krishna to manage the resources of the material nature and other, and other things. Um, they're like the administrators of the, of the universe. And they're, they're doing it under the direction of uh, Krishna through Lord Brahma and, and through their hearts also. But the difference between them and the pure devotees of Krishna is that they still have uh, attachment to control and to own and do those thing, kinds of things. So their, their devotion is not completely pure. Even though we accept them as devotees, but we don't worship them in the same way as demigod worshippers worship them. The demigod worshippers worship them for business only, like a merchant. They, they want to do a sacrifice and they want to get something back from them. But the yajna is supposed to be done for the purpose of satisfying the Supreme. But, as Srila Prabhupada said, because the system that's given in the Vedic science, the Vedic way of life, 
directs us to sacrifice, you know, to the demigods. And ultimately, because all those sacrifices to the demigods have Vishnu there in the sacrifice, as a part of the sacrifice, in the mantras, in the fire, uh, in the, the whole process, ultimately it is for the, for the pleasure of, of, of Vishnu or Krishna. Therefore, it's said in one of the purports that if we satisfy Krishna, then the demigods automatically become satisfied. The ordinary people of the world who are still conditioned and have material desires, they worship the demigods and offer sacrifice to them for their own gratification, for to, to acquire something or to be able to do something better or for some personal uh, motive or for the m motive their, of their family or their country or whatever. Uh, but those things, and therefore it says that the materialistic person is obliged to, to offer back to the demigods the things that they are giving them in sacrifice. Because of that gradually, it gradually uh, trains their mind to be submissive to authority, to higher authority. And that process gradually brings us to the point of Krishna consciousness over time. It takes a long time to do it that way. But it, it gets the job done, but it has to be done perfectly. There can be no mistake in the sacrifice. Nobody that's in the sacrifice can be displeased in any way. Otherwise, the sacrifice is ruined. Whereas the Sankirtan sacrifice satisfies all the demigods because it satisfies Krishna. And there's no hard and fast rules for doing that chanting, whether you're chanting japa or whether you're chanting in mass sankirtan in the, in the streets or in the temple in front of the deities. That satisfies Krishna. And when Krishna is satisfied, the, the root of the tree has been nourished and everyone becomes satisfied, especially demigods. Hare Krishna. Bhum Bhakta Matsu. Hare Bhum Bhakta Matsu. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to your most revered spiritual master, Srila Prabhupada. Daily readings of Srila Prabhupada's books, Ki Jo. Haribo. And um, something more from Bhakti Rupa. Haribo Bhakti Rupa. Find it interesting how Prabhupada says that eating sanctified foodstuffs sanctifies the finer tissues in the memory, allowing us to remember the path of Krishna consciousness. Exactly. We'll hear more about that in the next verse tomorrow. The first verse tomorrow, we'll talk about that. There's a question also. Question. Probably a silly question, but are these finer tissues part of the gross body? And if so, perhaps it would be possible for scientists to measure the positive effects of taking prasadam? Yeah, th there are ways, but... It's not, Krishna consciousness is not achieved in that way. Because Krishna consciousness depends on us pleasing Krishna. So the finer tissues in the body, the brain is like an instrument. You know, like you have your computer and it has a CPU, a, cent a central pro processing unit. And the person has to, pr has to program it to be able to do things and then when it's programmed and you put put the input in a certain way then it'll act the way you want it to act but if there's something wrong with the coprocessor or something wrong with the hardware then it won't work so the purpose of sanctifying the, the finer brain tissues is to make the machine that the body is using in order to live in this world uh, fit uh, to be able to eventually reach the goal of human life.
That's why it's said there that the sense gratifiers, they don't have a goal in life. So yes, the purification of the brain, because it's the central coprocessor of the whole body, all the activities are, are being run by the brain, the head, then the body can work properly. Without it, it can't. And if it doesn't have sanctified tissues, then it can't understand spiritual sound. It can't understand spiritual subject. Hare Krishna. we got three minutes left. So far, this is the last comment from Rati Manjari. Hare Krishna, Rati. You get the last word. Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada and to the glorious month of Kartik. In response of the recent violence, today we went to the hog H A G U E Hague. Hague. Today we went to the Hague to demonstrate around and in front of the Bangladesh Embassy to ask for the protection of the Hindus in Bangladesh. We chanted the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra and the, the Narasimha prayers, distributed flyers and prasadam. The cause was not a happy one. But still it felt good to be out there and show solidarity with the devotees in Bangladesh. That's wonderful. And also, even above that, you're chanting the holy name into the ears of all these people. So unconsciously, for them, you're giving them the best thing. So congratulations. And we, we, we should see this protest in the right light. These are Vaishnavas <clears throat> that are being killed and deities of Prabhupada burned and the, and the other de de deities destroyed. This, if this does not make the heart of a Vaishnava burn with uh, anger actually, uh, then the person's not a Vaishnava. When somebody acts improperly to me, I shouldn't take it personally. I should think, yes, this is, I deserve this because of my previous activities. But when we see open violence and uh, offenses against the deities and against pure Vaishnavas, then we should feel uh, the energy uh, to do something about it. Just like we're doing that right now, Sankirtan Jagya, and speaking about it, and try, trying to uh, appreciate it. Sometimes the devotees think, oh, this is making us look like Hindus, and it's political. No, no, that's not the right mentality. The right mentality is that the Vaishnavas are the ones that are spreading truth and joy through the chanting of the holy names. And if violence is preventing them from doing that, that is implication for the whole world. It's offensive, extremely offensive to Krishna and all the Vaishnavas. So it may be superficially looking like a political demonstration, but if this is the purpose, to protect the Vaishnavas. And we don't do it with violence, but we do it with the holy name and with speaking this Bhagavad Gita like we do every day now during, during Karti to purify the atmosphere of the world. And with that wonderful... Uh, Rati Manjari says, Thank you for encouraging us, dear Guru Maharaj. Always enlightening and enlivening me. Thank you. Hare Krishna. She Bhagavad Gita as it is, ki jai. She made Bhagavad Gita as it is, ki jai. Samaveda Bhakta Vinda ki jai. Gaur Prem Anandi Hari Hari Bo. So join us tomorrow night, same time, same place, same topic. The, the ongoing instruction from the Supreme Authority, Krishna Himself, on how to behave properly in this material world. 
to be able to become pure and a and pleasing to Krishna and everyone else. See you tomorrow night. Hare Krishna.